so many of my colleagues today in a call to action uh, for this body to address a crisis that is at its breaking point for pensioners across our country, retired workers who've come from the building trades, miners, truck drivers, so many more. Actually, hundreds of thousands of Americans losing their pensions or about to lose them. Millions of American retirees have worked and earned pensions that they contributed to through the multi-employer pension programs. In fact, I met one retiree recently who paid over $225,000 into his plan and has not been able to access one penny. Not one penny. Yet hundreds of these plans face serious financial shortfalls, leaving millions of retirees facing an uncertain retirement future. For today, Congress needs to step up and secure the pension benefits these workers have earned. And there should be no pension cuts for workers who contributed to their own plans and should have a right to the money that they invested. Congress can no longer kick the can down the road. There simply is no more time. This problem does not go away if Congress continues to ignore it. Rather, the financial stress mounts for the retirement funds and, of course, for the retirees and for their families so severely impacted. Indeed, the costs the federal government will bear if we don't solve this problem now become exponentially more significant as time ensues. Over the last four years, I've heard extensively from retirees forced to ride this terrible economic roller coaster. It's almost like a corkscrew, right side up, upside down. They're caught in this as their retirement security careens out of their control through no fault of their own. There are thousands, tens of thousands of Americans who did everything our country asks of its productive citizenry. Retirees who worked for decades for a company and thought they would have a secure retirement, but now they face a stark reality. From Toledo, Ohio, such retirees as Carol Jones, who drove a truck for over 30 years and who missed holidays and major life milestones because of his work on the road. The knowledge that he was earning a pension helped in those moments, but now he says it all feels like a pipe dream. And you know, when you drive truck for over 30 years, things happen to your knees, they happen to your back. Bouncing over concrete uh, for three decades has severe costs for so many. But if a solution is not passed now, Carol won't even be able to continue to care for his disabled daughter. Or how about Ernest Fry, a teamster for 54 years? He and his wife currently can live on what they earn through his pension, but with its threatened cuts, everything will fall apart from, for them. They will have to rely on the government to cover the difference. And with the rising cost of medical expenses, they run the risk of also losing their home if his pension is cut. What kind of cruelty is this? Or how about Cindy Grimley, who was hired in 1978 and has taken pride in being able to take care of herself? Even with the pension she earned and lives on, she cannot afford medications her doctor tells her she needs, and she can't afford to lose a single dollar of her promised pension. Or how about Tom Brady, who worked 30 years, 30 years, with Roadway Express, and is a Vietnam veteran. He faced a 50% cut under the central state's pension fund application. They call it MEPRA. Any cut to his pension won't only impact him. He has six grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren whom he and his wife help support. I hear countless stories across this country of how retirees are caring for children with disabilities, supporting their own ill and aged parents, or supporting children and grandchildren with life expenses. These cuts impact more than just the individual who earned the pension, and really, 
Don't these workers who've retired have a right to the money that they put into these plans? You know, there were hundreds of companies that walked away from their pension promises. They didn't keep their promise to the workers. The workers put their money in, and some of the companies walked away. Is it the workers' fault? Ask any retiree or responsible economist, if we fail to fix this pension crisis, we will create a tremendous deficit to our economy, both locally and nationally. Some retirees already live under the financial constraint of us not solving this challenge, and some have already had 70% cuts to their pensions. For example, Local 17 in Cleveland, iron workers. How about the New York State Teamsters? How about the United Furniture Workers Pension? And the International Association of Machinists Motor City Pension. They've all seen that decisions were made forcing cuts upon their retirees and millions more live on that precipice. Money that should be coming to them because they earned it. They put it away and then it was taken away. This House has continued to let these retirees down. There has not been a single hearing to fully understand the financial plight confronting retirees. How irresponsible is that for the leadership of this House? The Senate has only taken a bit of action, but no solution. Immediately after the House passed the scam pension bill a few years ago, that is the original Multi-Employer Pension Reform Act, I set to work to correct the unfairness that it allowed. And we introduced the Keep Our Pension Promises Act, which back then had the number HR 2412. We called it COPPA. It would have prevented these draconian cuts to earn pensions by filling the financial gap of many of these plans, such as the Central States Pension Fund, and reinstate the anti-cutback provisions that are contained in the ERISA legislation. Uh, the Retirement Security Act, the bedrock of that law was that if workers work and they put money aside for their pensions, that pension money will be there for them. But our bill lacked sufficient bipartisan support. So back last December, it was very reassuring for me to stand with my colleagues, Representative Rich Neal of Massachusetts and from the other body, Senator Sherrod Brown, as we introduced the Bush-Lewis Act, H.R. 4444 and Senate Bill 2147. In the House, this legislation now has two Republican co-sponsors, and I hope many more of our colleagues' support will follow. But there's not time to recruit co-sponsors one or two at a time. Retirees across our country are waiting for true leadership to push an equitable solution so they aren't led to the guillotine on their pensions. It is time for real congressional leadership to identify the impact this crisis will have and organize an effort here, either to create a new bipartisan solution or pass the already bipartisan Butch Lewis Act. If we fail to act, we can no longer wonder why the middle class is angry at Washington and this Congress, for they see this as just another broken promise by Washington. We can no longer wonder why they believe the system is rigged, because here are more than a million honest Americans who worked for a living decade after decade, they worked hard, they followed the rules, and now they're getting thrown under the bus. The companies they worked for reneged on their promises, and you know what? Unless we do something, the promise under ERISA will remain unfulfilled, and that is their pension security. I would say to my colleagues, if you ever wonder why tens and tens of millions of Americans are angry and deeply disappointed or feel betrayed by their government and the companies they worked for, look no further than this issue. I remember one man who didn't come from my state, but I met him here in Washington. He said, Congresswoman, he said, I earned and put away 
$225,000 in my pension plan. And they told me I had to work 20 years. So I drove 20 years, drove truck, truck 20 years, and he said I started to have back problems. And when I got to my 20th year and I made it through, I said to them, well, I'm ready to apply. And the company said, you know what, we changed the rules. You have to work two more years. So he said, two more years. <sighs> okay. So he made every, every effort that he could under great pain to work those two years up through his 22nd year of employment as a driver. And then at the 22nd year, the company said, you know what, we changed the rules. Now you're going to have to work an additional three years. Imagine having promises broken all the time. And now he is disabled. He has difficulty standing, sitting. He has pain all the time. And he has not been able to gain access to a penny of money that he earned. Surely, if someone at the White House is listening to this, if you think about President Trump's travels through Ohio when he talked to the miners and he sought their vote, or in Chicago with those who drove truck and paid into the Central States Teamsters Fund, the promises that were made, surely we can find a way to help keep the pension promises that these workers earned. I want to thank all the members who've co-sponsored our former bill to keep our Pension Promises Act and the Butch Lewis Act, and to thank members of both parties for trying to find a solution, a real solution for this crisis. We are moving toward it. We really don't have any time to waste because Congress must reach a solution early this year, and we should look no further than including that pension relief in the upcoming spending deal that is being negotiated between the White House and this Congress now. Pensions now, pensions now. These workers have earned their pension. Why has the government of the United States made it so difficult and made their retirement years so stressful by not reaching a solution to date? I make a strong appeal on behalf of over a million workers across this country who so justly earned the pension benefits that they deserve. I thank my colleagues uh, who are listening. I thank the American people for writing us and for sharing their personal stories with us. And I have great hope that in these final negotiations on a spending bill for uh, 2018, which is currently under negotiation at the highest levels, that this pension issue finally will be resolved. Keep the letters and emails and phone calls and visits coming. This is the time to make your weight felt. Thank you so very much, and I yield back my remaining time. Gentlewoman yields back. The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn.